Hey, it's Coolio if you don't know, and uh, we are doing some silly things today, and I don't know how this is going to turn out. Uh, so here's the story. Um, there once was a show on YouTube called Shovelware Diggers. Uh, what this show was was there was this two CD compilation called the Softkey 2000 Hit Shareware Games uh, Collection. And uh, the, the whole premise behind that show is he grew up with, uh, with those CDs, you know, went through them and all, so all sorts of things, and then did a show for 300 weeks where uh, he like put it out to his patrons uh to like select folders from this compilation and um you know see what comes up there's a lot of uh interesting things that uh that came up in in uh in that collection yes it ran for 300 weeks and then he decided to sunset the show so any uh folders that were not explored would remain unexplored. Except that I also grew up with this uh, two CD collection and I want to see what was left behind. So, um, we're doing this. This is Shovelware Scavengers and this is Windows 3.11. Um, this is running in DOSBox X uh, 2024-0301 and, um, I did try to actually install the uh, 2000 Shareware Games application. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work. So I'm not going to be able to really show it off, but I can show off some uh, screenshots of what that looked like. It's basically this uh, this window here. It's, it's very crushed, I realize, but there's not really much I can do about it other than like focus on uh, certain aspects of the window here, like the categories and the game list and the buttons here. So you would go through, pick a category, pick a game, then you would usually launch it. Uh, it would run off the CD. Sometimes you can't though, and you have to install it. Yeah, silly um, CD things. So um, instead of going through that application, which I wasn't planning on doing anyway, I copied the whole thing to uh, this, uh, the, the C drive here. Also, I need to just make sure that the audio is set up correctly because I noticed that it wasn't. Okay, yeah, that should be audible on stream. Um... So yeah, what I have here is I've made an entire list on um, on a Google Sheet of everything that has been selected on Shovelware Diggers. Uh, the gray ones were selections, the, the red ones were failed digs, which means that you couldn't get them working for some reason. Chris Ossett couldn't, the original host of the show. Uh, the yellow ones are weird because there is a um, there was a third party list uh, that was put out by um, Nanaki Des uh, where they uh, basically took all of the entries and uh, kind of cataloged uh, which video they belong to and uh, what each one of them was and things like that. And the yellow ones are not marked as having been played on Nanaki's list, but were marked as having been played on Chris's list. And usually that's going to be as a result of what's called an auto fail, where he had already um, checked out that particular uh, folder, either in a previous dig or on his other show, Ancient DOS Games. Anyway, y'all can take a look at that uh, list right there at that link. 
And I'm also going to open up the queue here. There are two redeems. And um, one of the redeems is if you want me to look at one of either the white, red, or yellow folders. And the other redeem, which is more expensive, is looking at a gray folder. That one's more expensive and also in limited quantity because of the fact that it was already shown on Shovelware Diggers. I'm more interested in seeing um, what was not shown on that show. So basically, it's a blind bag. Just pick something based on the name and basically nothing else. And uh, then I'll put it on the, the scavenge list here. And I have some uh, some quality categories that we'll use. They're just kind of a, a neat thing for me. Uh, there is treasure, which is something that is actually worth you know taking a look at and was really good. A relic is uh, something that maybe wasn't as good, but still worthwhile. A curio, kind of neat. A trinket, not really worth much. Junk is basically just, it works, but it's not really worth ever looking at again. And trash is something that doesn't even work. Okay. So while uh, everyone is um, perhaps perusing through that list, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick something myself. And I'm going to do so, at least for the first one, I'll do so with the Redeem. Your redeem like of that, um, as long as long as it's clear what folders you're looking at, it doesn't need to be um, to be formatted in a very specific way. Just make sure that I understand what it is that you're asking for. The white, yellow, and red are four hundred, but just know that with the red. I might not even be able to make it work. And with the yellow, it's same thing. I might not be able to make it work, or it might not be particularly interesting anyway. Uh, the gray ones are the 4,000s, just the gray ones. And also, when something gets picked, that will turn black. So, let us begin with Win Games GG. Uh, where? Come on. Towers. Uh, so, I, I'll do it a little bit, uh, a little bit the same as, um, as Chris did, just kind of look at the files in here and see what we can find. This file is not a valid Windows help file. Cool. Good start. Towers for Windows. Whatever this is costs uh, 15 bucks with a $2.50 surcharge for a credit card, apparently. And I still have no idea what this is just by looking at the file. So let's just run it. Okay. Weird things that uh, that shareware does sometimes, just to be annoying. Okay, so this is a card game.
And center tiles, window tints. Oh, right. I want to also. Good. And we're going to start this. Tense point there. See, it's the old thing different. Part of the game is a black plate voluntary suit stacked one card at a time, beginning with ace, ending with king. That's probably talking about the foundations, spots, and seven piles and marble solver. The biggest difference, yeah. All the cards are face up. It seems kind of similar to Klondike. So let's just play it like that and see what happens. But yeah, y'all y'all can queue up things. Um I've I'm also kind of experimenting with um with uh Sammy. Okay, so stack him up. Oh, but I can only drag one card at a time. Okay. That seems kind of annoying. Uh -huh. And it has to be suited. I can only move the top card. Like. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so it's free sell, kind of ish, in a way. All right, gotcha. So I can move those over here then. Okay. That's, that's more reasonable. In fact, that might make it a little too easy. We'll see. I might eat those words later. Well, let's see if I can get the... A. But now I need to get to that four, and there's no easy way of doing that. Yeah, this is the part where I'm eating those words. Um, hmm. Now, what can I put? I can only put kings in empty slots. And that being said, I think I might have kind of dug myself into a hole. I'm not seeing any any moves, honestly. I'm also not going to spend a whole lot of time on a card game, but uh we'll see how we'll see how far I can get in in this hand and uh I don't think it's going to be much farther than this. Uh, we are in Windows 3.11 because this is what platform that uh, hmm, excuse me what what platform that uh, this compilation was available on basically is pretty much all Windows 3.1 and DOS games and I don't think we're gonna get much farther in this so. Um, I think I'm gonna call this one good. We get it. It's a card game. Yes, Windows. GG. Hotels. And I would call that. It's a it's a curio. Like it's it's functional, but it's not particularly that interesting. I mean, there is a th uh, Windows 3.2, just that it was China only. 
I don't know that I would pay $15 for this. I will say that much. <sighs> really? I'm exiting the program. Please go away. Thank you. What do we got next? Okay, uh, so that is... We're going into DOS games. So I'm going to go ahead and exit to DOS. Um, aid. Um, oops. So what is this? So let me mark it off of. There we go. Uh, yeah, th this should be Tyrion's. I'm I'm doing them in the order that I receive them. Hopefully, I haven't fully tested the system that I'm using. Ah, uh, I don't see. Okay, there's a file ID. Uh, no, not cat type. So this is General Buddha's Labyrinth, the or Voy Orbs of Destruction. Oh, that's that's good. Um This is twenty dollars, and this also gets you the editor. And I don't really know what to expect, so uh let's let's run it. General Buddha's Labyrinth. Okay. Uh, about Butta? The evil General Butta is at war with your people. You have stumbled into his labyrinth during a battle to save your home world from evil minions. You are lost. You must escape or die. Remember, your home world needs your help. You use your arrow keys to control movement in the space bar to stop? Huh. So it's just kind of... Keep moving until I stop, I guess. Q key to quit and save a game. S key toggles speed. You have no weapon. Okay. So move and stop. This is episode one, remember. Cost $20 for the other two episodes and the editor. Oh boy. Let's get started. Yep. Oh, geez. That is, that is flickering. Also, it might be moving a little too fast. Also, pressing S doesn't really seem to be changing the speed at all. The controls are not particularly responsive uh, moving between screens, I will say that for sure. Also, um, hmm. there we go. Are we going to get some destruction from this thing? Or that thing. It does seem to be kind of tracking my movement to a certain extent. I probably don't want to stick around for too long here. I didn't notice any controls for shooting though. Which seems like an oversight. If you're gonna move a tank around a maze, you should probably have a way to like shoot. Oh, I see. Okay. So when you when you enter a screen, uh it will wait until you actually input something before everything starts to move. That's not a terrible idea. Oh, but what is I want to get through here. I can 
clearly fit through this gap. What are you doing, game? Hmm. Hang on. Let me see if I can um, turn it down to 286. And it definitely changed the speed. It did say I have no weapons. Why does a tank not have weapons? Like that, that is a concern. It's like the only tank available to these people was one that just did not have a cannon. Well, we found the exit anyway, but we need a key. Uh, this might be a little problematic. No, it, you just gotta stay there. Okay, later, nerd. But so far, nothing has really been much of a challenge here. I mean, you have those things kind of floating around, but uh, oh, here we go. Is this one going to cause some opposition? They're not moving faster than I do, so probably not. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if this is going to work. Nope. All right. Well, we took one hit. Also, I don't know if there's supposed to be sound. I'm not hearing anything. Um, PC speaker. My PC speaker is on. There is no reason that uh, if this game has sound, then we're not hearing it. Also, I really don't know how I was supposed to get around that, but we do take multiple hits. Oh, hey, we found a key, which redraws the entire screen for some reason. Let's see if I can find the exit again. Um, no, I really don't want to have to deal with you. There we go. Also, I forgot to turn on the, uh, I forgot to turn on the timer and that's, that's fine. Anyway, let's see if we can find the door, and I think that'll be good. Like they, they track you a little too well, though. Like, I don't know if there's a good way to get around them. And they track you a little too well, but they don't seem to have very good... Uh, very good pathing when it comes to walls. Oh, wait. That's a different color. I'm guessing that we have to use the yellow key to find, like, a green key to find a purple key to get out. And that would uh, that would make sense with the uh, the key indicators in the uh, in the bottom right. Anyway, this sure has been a game. Um, let me just type. Yes, hello, Jewel. Did I not say hello, Jewel? I'm sorry. 
But yeah, that was uh, General Butter's Labyrinth. Uh, let's put it on the board. So that was DOS, uh, Arcade, and uh, I don't know, it was $20, it wasn't particularly engaging. I'm gonna personally, personally I'll call this a trinket. It, was kind of really meh, especially for that price. You wrote like stuff. Probably tied to FPS. Might as well play the old Banania. Uh, also, do I not have a long run game plan? I do have plans. Just that um, I have plans at a very specific time. And I don't want to start anything big um, until that time. Okay. So, check the thing here. The board APS soft. All right. That's a normal dig. Well, we don't have a whole lot of options here, so I guess let's just run the game. Oh, geez. I think we need to change to CGA for this. Because this definitely looks like it's using the modified uh, CGA text mode. And let me see, because I haven't actually checked on how to do that on the fly. Um, I guess we can probably just do this. No, that's not it. Main. There we go. CGA. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. Also, now the... What is going on? Reset window size. There we go. Uh, so yeah, I... This might take a little bit more effort than it, it than is worth doing uh, at this point in time, so I'm going to go ahead and refund that one. Uh, you do get your points back, so you know, your your precious 400 points. Okay, so we got main strategy, win risk. Well, I'm guessing it's risk. Um, Jewel, you do need to to redeem. Uh, the thing in order to uh, to for me to play a game. Also, like I I like how DOSBox is configured that I can like use the um, the scroll wheel to like input up and down. Strategy. And risk. And uh, I'm going to mark that off. I mean, this seems pretty obvious as to what it's going to be. Uh, lower card set values. 
Let's check the help file real quick. If you know how to play the board game, it's pretty straightforward. If you don't know how to play the board game, um, go borrow. Please do not assume that whoever is playing this is going to know how to play your board game. Explain the game, please. Don't be lazy like this. Um, map is slightly different. You always roll the maximum allowed number of dice. And, uh, so yeah, it assumes that you know how to play the game. For those of you with less than three buttons on your mouse, which is probably going to be most people in the Windows 3.1 days, the left up and right arrows can be substituted for the left, middle, and right mouse buttons. I don't know if DOSBox X supports the middle button, but uh, move one army with the left button, five with the right, and ten with the middle. Okay, well. All right, let's. Uh, let's start the game uh, with Coolio, Weirdo, and Sicko. I don't know. Mind that I have, like, I know how to play a risk, I just am not a strategist by any means. Uh, let's claim Japan. Okay, so you claim territories and then you put armies in the territories. Fair enough. It's misdetecting double clicks, that's great. And I think it's my actual turn now, so now I. Oh, right, I need to start that. And now I play as four armies. Claims Ontario first, because obviously. Um, and there. So, territory to attack from, or move from, or I can pass with the middle button. Uh, Northwest Territory. Good talk. And it automatically moves the maximum number of armies to the place that uh, that I have cl that I have uh, taken over, I guess. Grim, God damn it. Uh, let's uh, take over Mexico. Attacker loses two armies. Good. Oh, fantastic. This is going just great. Uh, good for this turn. And um, middle click is not being detected. So I'm going to push up here and immediately lose two territories over here. Both sides lose. Okay, I've taken over Iceland. It's very precise with where um where I need to be clicking. Oh good. Mm -hmm. Alright. I'm not good at this game. I just want to make that clear. If I didn't already make it clear. Oh, come on. It also doesn't help that I'm just losing every single battle here. Are you kidding me? This seems heavily biased, like, against me here. Okay, well, that, that is a series of things that have happened. 
I'm down to only being able to put three down because I'm doing so terribly. Um, I mean, if nothing else, it plays really fast. So, it just allows me to, to lose this game very fast. So you're not attacking with an extra 20 units, that is why you lose. Yeah, I probably will lose in like seven turns. Or I could just, you know, call it good there. All right, so that was win. Um, what was it? I have the thing here. Strategy win risk. Oops. Um. Yeah, so someone could be into this. I I feel. And like as far as I could tell, there's not really much of uh of much of anything like it seems to be a free program. I'll call it a curio. For it being a free program, it plays well enough for people. This might not be free though. There's this calm thing. I, like either this is like in this game, by the way. Like, there's this calm thing about win risk. Uh, how to use help is just got to be help on help. So, I don't know. It's fine. It seems to be free. It, I'll call it a curio. What's next? Um, Jewel, you need to provide more information than just Banania. <laughs> Uh, you might want to resubmit that and like, uh, hang on, that should have, there we go. So yeah, please resubmit that with a full path, um, the folder structure in the sheet. Yes, thank you, Benny. Okay. Now we got Arcade, Warhead, and we're going to accept that. So, when games Arcade. Warhead. Raid me. Warheads for Windows. Let's show, show our copy of Blah Blah. Uh, installation of the program, sure. This was in 1991 by an Eric Lee Steedle and Brian C. Lowe. And I still have no idea what this is. Uh, check the help file. Oh my goodness, what is this? I can't read this. Um, registration. Okay, well, it's $17. It's $15 for the game, $1 for media, $1 for transmission cost. Never mind calling it shipping and handling. It's transmission cost. What does reg registration get me? Options galore. Greek for a real lot of. Okay, thanks. I'm planning on writing more games. More, more, more. We love Windows. F uh, fantastic. Control dialog box, whatever that is. Missile speed. What is this, anyway? Object of the game. The object of war is to keep your cities... A oh, this is... Okay. This is a missile command clone. That's what this is. A serious lack of action games, probably because it's kind of hard to make an action game for Windows 3.1. It's, it's a bit... I'll say 
you don't see a whole lot of Windows games that have um, that have PC speaker effects. Oh shoot! Sorry. I have a lot of things to uh, to keep track of here. Sorry. Some of it I have a little bit more automated thanks to my setup here, but it's still a lot. Okay, so Warheads for Windows. It's a uh, missile command game. The bonus cities left, death toll. Okay, we got some, some points. New pause, who dis? This at least is very intuitive. Like, I didn't really read the instructions, but it's obvious controls. Uh, you left click for the, uh, for the launcher on the left. You right click for the launcher on the right. And there you go. Also, I, I like the the little like hand that's counting up all of the uh, all of the missiles that are remaining. There doesn't seem to be much of an indication on screen of how many missiles are left, though. Oh, here we go. We got some some additional. Uh, uh oh. Well, we lost. Can you take like multiple hits or something? Lost a couple of cities there. Oh jeez. <laughs> well, to to the to the hundred and fifty nine thousand hundred and twenty lives lost. I am sorry. <laughs> I know that fixes nothing. Ah. Come on. There we go. Okay, the death toll has not changed. Which, at least it hasn't gotten higher. Where are you going? Well, that's another city dead. So I don't really understand exactly what the whole registration thing is, though. Oh, we got a bonus city at some point. But uh, death toll has gone up again. Wow, I am not good at leading my shots. Oh. Wait, why am I worried about that one? It's not shooting at, at uh, anything that is inhabited. Oh hey, look at that. We got an, an additional city. All right. Also, I noticed like the missile silos are actually like tracking my movement. That is a really nice touch. But yeah. Warheads for Windows seems perfectly functional. I don't understand what the registration benefits are. Oh, geez. Okay, yeah, those do seem to take um, multiple hits. Yay, we're back full on cities.
Anyway, I think that's enough of Warheads for Windows. Let's see what happens when everyone dies. Oh no, the Missile Commander has given up on us. All is lost. Ah! Somehow nothing hit the actual missile silos, though. But all of our cities are dead. So there we go. Death toll 765,000 and a score of 15,890. We're out of here! Okay. That uh, is nine games. Was that arcade? Yep, yeah, arcade. Warhead. Warheads or Windows. And that was that was honestly really well put together. Very responsive. Lots of little nice uh, additional touches. I will call this one a relic. All right. So now we got Last Games Arcade BB2. Not much to be said here. Oh, I think I know what this is actually. Yeah, Blue Balls version 2.1. It's basically, yeah, um, you just kind of pick a name and uh, maybe we'll figure out something interesting. So yeah, uh, what this is, I'm just going to get right into it since uh, I know what it is. And I'm also going to turn down the speed because I remember this going actually really fast. Let's bump it down to 286. This is Blue Balls. Uh, it's basically a snake clone. And yeah, as you can see, like, I have it on 286 right now, and it is going really fast, actually. Um, I seem to recall there being, like, um, okay, BB2, one slowest to ten fastest, and probably def it defaults to one it defaults to the slowest speed and that was still really fast let me bump it down even more then uh cpu emulate speed uh we're gonna bump it down to eight megahertz Yay, we want a level. So yeah, it's basically um, a snake clone, except that you don't leave a solid path behind you, so you can kind of tread back through your previous paths. You can also go diagonally, which is required for this level. And every so often, if you don't get the blue ball, it's going to move to a different location. It's a weird sound effect that it's making when I collect something. Also, 
I am the genius running directly back into my path. Also, like, it seems like really easy to just move on to, to additional levels because like I just need to collect two blue balls in order to uh to move on. Oh my goodness. There we go. Now I am kind of interested because like this is the slowest speed on an 8 megahertz 286. So how fast does this thing go on, on that speed of computer? Let's uh let's game over this and uh explore that for a second. Game over! Oh boy, holy... I'm sorry, what? 135 and a score of 1.6 million. Well, 1.7 if you round up. Oh, and then it just throws me directly into another game. Gotcha. So this is the fastest speed that it goes on a 286 8 megahertz and it doesn't really seem any faster does it really default to one yeah there is barely any difference unless i think maybe the red balls show up more often i don't know uh how much did this cost, by the way, if it cost anything? Oh, this program was originally written as an independent study project for R. Drabeck at the computer. So in all likelihood, this was just free. Okay. Oops, I did not want to open that. Uh, put this over here so it's easier for me to look at. Uh, so that was DOS Games Arcade BB2 as Blue Balls 2. And, and there's not much to it. Seems kind of an easy game. I'll call it a curio. It was it was a study project. Um does what it sets out to do, and that's good enough. All right. Looks like we are playing dominoes. Oh, I might want to turn it back up to 46. There we go. Give you 33 megahertz to, to work with. All right. What we got? Win games. Comp? And Domino. Oh, we have a Domino's game, that's for damn sure. Win Domino's registration form. Oh good, how much does this cost? Ten dollars and two fifty for shipping in the USA and five dollars outside the USA to someone in Puerto Rico. Um Ah, this is a readable. Yeah, it's a Domino's game. Resemblance of that game invented in China? Was Domino's invented in China? Huh. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, I don't know. Uh, you know what, let's just jump into it. How hard can it be? Domino's! Also, I forgot to double check the, the game on the list here. There. Mark it off. 
Okay, win dominoes. So I pass from the options menu, apparently. Sure. Uh, select players. Dwight Johnson. I just put my name on this list, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Isabel Roman and Willie Willis. This is your program. Blah -de blah. Cancel. Okay. We got a four player domino game. Uh, so, dominoes, pretty easy. Uh, your ends here are four and three, which means I have to play something that has a four or a three on it. And uh, I believe if you don't have something, then you have to basically draw tiles until you actually can play. Yeah, I know I know the basics of dominoes. I have not played in like a century. Now, can I play off of this end? No. If I can't play, it does not light up at all. Uh, so right now we only got ones. So yeah, we we cannot play. Oh, and this this doesn't have a, a boneyard that you draw from. I guess I just play until someone runs out of tiles. Hmm, we can play this on either end. Um, I could strategize, well, let's try to strategize a little bit. I, I'm seeing a lot of twos, which means I might be able to block someone if I make it so that two is the only option. Okay. Um. So I would have to pick from here, and I don't know. So do I do that? Okay, yes, this is that's what I wanted to do. Game is block partner with fewest points to win this hand. Winner of this hand is dot. I'm having a hard time parsing who has what score. Uh, oh, and that squares the game as well. Square it on the four. There is no score, only pause. Well, this game will give you cause for pause. Uh, try the three. Oh, wonder if this hand is this dot. Okay, I'm guessing that this is their score. Like, I'm guessing that like I'm partnered with yellow over here, and these two are partnered together. And this is their score. This is our score, and we're not doing particularly well. Partner's not doing so well either right now. Uh, squared on the two. Uh, 
That appears to have been a decent move. Although my partner couldn't play off of that either, so... Maybe not that great. I think this one's worth more points, so let's get rid of it. I mean, when you when you play a partner's game with cards, um, you don't see your your partner's cards. There's no way for you to see their cards, because otherwise everyone could see their cards. Anyway, I've won this hand. Winner of this hand is Coolio. Yay! We have points. Uh, so I ha think we have to start with double blank, right? I think I'm I think I might call it good after this hand though because like we get it it's it's a dominoes game but it's a it's a very functional dominoes game like, there is nothing wrong with this dominoes game there is something wrong with the fact that I forgot the timer again. Uh, I do not have any moves. Uh-oh. Oh no. This is going badly. Okay. But Blue Eyes here was able to clear their hand. Well, anyway, win dominoes. Print registration. How much was this again? Ten dollars. You know what? Yeah, this is worth ten dollars. I right, saw so someone who's into dominoes. This is absolutely worth ten dollars. Someone who's not into dominoes. Maybe they'll get into dominoes. It's perfectly functional. It works. Um, cop. Domino. That was, uh, wind dominoes, was it? Win. Ugh. Wind dominoes. I would call this a relic. It's low enough price. Works perfectly fine. No real complaints. All right, what's next here? Um, next is I think Jewel messed up that uh, that redeem, so she redeemed again. Oh, we're playing that, are we? I think that is probably a yellow game on the list. Uh, so that is DOS games. Oh, okay. Um, there has been a misunderstanding. Jewel, you have selected a gray game. Uh, you would need to uh, redeem the 4,000 points for the gray game. Because that, that, I guess you weren't here at the beginning. So any games that are in gray were played on another series called Shovelware Diggers. And so since they were already shown on that show, it costs more to show them on this show because they were already seen. I personally am more interested in the games that were not seen on that show, so that's why that one costs more. But if you pick and you can pick any white, yellow, or red for 400, knowing that the red one is probably not going to work. But all of the white ones are completely just blind bag, and we'll see what we get. Oh boy. Um, so win games. I think I know what this is. I 
think I know what this is without even opening it. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Let me introduce you to some to to a man named Albert Ashton. So, this guy made pretty much one game fifty times. Also, he wants you to oh do not install it under C Windows. Install it in C Windows games. Okay, well that's cool. But yeah, he made one game fifty times. And all of the games are extremely noisy. And it doesn't look like those noises have been included in this copy of the game, so it's just gonna ding a lot. Oh, this is an early one of his games. Yeah, because most of his games are really noisy and obnoxious, but this is absolutely an Albert Ashton game. And uh, basically all of them are some flavor of whack-a-mole. Let me demonstrate. Oh, this one has options to it. Usually his unregistered copies don't have these options. Interesting. Well, PC Survival Tip Services? That's not what this is, but okay. Um, also, you can register this game for only 552. This weirdly specific registration. Anyway, it's just the things pop up. You click on them. And you do this for 95 seconds. Some of these are really bad. This one seems actually kind of functional. I mean, it's still this kind of whack-a-mole game. Yeah, it is really weird to play an Albert Ashton game that makes no sound whatsoever. Like, so many of these have shown up on Shovelware Diggers that is like, yeah, this one is just relatively bizarre. And there's only five targets. Some of these have like 15 targets and they disappear so fast. Oh, there we go. We finally missed a couple. Yeah, some of these are really hard to even get a positive score in. Uh, ten seconds left. And uh game is over. So we got 104 hits, four misses with a score of 5187. So that's the game. That's all it is. Uh, let's go ahead and put it on the board. Uh, did I mark it off? I did not mark it off. I should probably do that. Uh, so, scavenge list. So that was uh, Windows, Arcade, Rats, V1. I didn't catch the name, but let's just call it Bratz. And pretty much every Albert Ashton game, I'm going to call it Trinket. Because, like I said, he made the same game 50 times. And it's not really particularly more or less interesting any of these times. Just most of them are going to be a lot more noisy. And it's really weird that this one won't. Uh, okay. Let's see. Okay. 
Uh, that is uh, that that is the first good uh, good submission by Jewel. The wing games, water closet. I don't think that's what WC means. Tic tac, tic tac toe. Cost five bucks. Uh, made by someone in Updog, California. Well, that's neat. And it's even vector graphics. Like most people will be running uh, Windows in 640 by 480. This is running it in um, 800 by 600. What's up, dog? Nothing. What's up with you? But yeah, this is running in 800 by 600. The graphics were properly scaled to that level. So uh, yeah, there we go. Also, Zinfandel, hello. And Zinfandel, I know that you are a veteran of shovelware diggers, so I don't need to explain anything to you. I'm sure you already know what's going on. The only thing is there are two redeems. Uh, any games that are in gray, you use the expensive redeem. Anything else, you would use the cheap one. Anyway, let's play tic-tac-toe. Click on a box to know. Oh, configurable skill. All right, then. And one or two players. Okay. Cat's game. Meow, meow. Good. All right. You see the problem with a, with a computer-controlled tic-tac-toe game? Let's just let the computer win here. Yeah, I think this might have actually shown up on Shovelware Diggers, come to think of it, but it wasn't marked, so there it is, and there you go. Let's see. Yeah. Wow, this is really unresponsive when this uh, uh, animation happens. Let's try it on easy just to see what happens. Yeah, I think easy just means I'm going to play randomly. Anyway, that was tic-tac-toe. Let's put it up on the board. Uh, so that was win game. There you see, tic-tac, tic. -tac. Tato for Windows. It was functional, but also why would you pay five dollars for this? I'm calling it a trinket. It's not really worth any amount of money. All right. We got one game, the W2 Flasher as a normal dig, mark it off. One game, and W2 and Flasher. Flasher.doc is okay, well, that's not currently associated with anything. Let's go ahead and, and associate dot doc to write. Sure. Stroboscope. Turn your computer into a strobe light. Please do not use this program if you're epileptic or otherwise <laughs> Oh, jeez. Ah. Uh... What I'm going to do, I am going to stream it, but I'm also going to turn on, if I can find it here, where is the button for, I'm not going to stream it if I can't find the option, but uh, there we go. Low contrast filter is enabled. Well, designed for a previous version of Windows. Uh, it needs to be Windows 3.0. Well, too bad. We're going to just run it. Flasher. Yep, 
Yep, it's flashing. That was, that was Flasher, guys. Okay, when NW2 Flasher. Guess what I'm calling this? This is junk. It has basically no value whatsoever. Oh, okay. Um, I have to imagine that... Has that not shown up on Shovel War Diggers? Uh, Best Games, Arcade 3. Oh, okay. This was probably an autofail, because I, I am sure that this ran on Shovel War Diggers, but... Uh, We're gonna run it anyway, because this is a pretty good game. Uh... Oh, let's just get right into it. I know exactly what this is. Snarf by Everett Kayser. Cost $15, and um, it's a pretty neat game. Uh, I'm not really sure. Okay, use page up and page down or cursor keys to read these brief instructions. Any other key starts the game. Uh, registration details, blah blah blah, pick up the treasure. Don't get tagged too many times. Okay, redefines game keys. Use the cursor keys, control the hero's movement. Uh, was to shoot. That's weirdly prescient. Okay, so use was to shoot. When, if you finish the last level, you win the game. Anyway, let's go ahead and play the game. Ah! No, leave me alone. But yeah, classic little DOS game. Just collect the things, basically. But mainly you want to collect the key without getting tagged too many times. And then get out of here. And now we got the key. See if we can collect a little bit more treasure here. It's a nice thing about having the maximum number number of snarfs on uh, on the screen is that no more will spawn, so you can just have them all trail you, and uh, unless you get stuck like in a corner somewhere. Bob's your uncle, basically. But yeah, it's kind of a twin stick shooter, which is kind of rare in these days as well. All oh, right, I need to remember that this is also a warp. And my tags do not auto heal. I need to find a first aid station in order to recover my tags. I don't know that there is one on this stage. Okay, I don't get a whole lot of twin stick shooters for DOS. But this is effectively that. Uh, we only have 12, 12 tags left though. Now the fact that the key shows up 
uh, on the sprite probably means I could, yeah, I can only carry one key at a time. Also, the shots don't cross through the key, so that's great. Not a fan with having to pick up every single key for this, though. Oh, here we go. Get our tags back. Game is similar to Banania. I don't think I've uh, I don't think I've heard of Banania. Also, all of the snarfs are coming this way. Also, not a fan of like when two of them merge, they just kind of disappear. That's not great. If I can get through this without getting tagged too much here, I feel like I might have phased through uh, through enemies a little bit there. I think at some point there is also like a competition to like submit like custom levels, and some of the best levels would be like included in the game or something. Of course, that does require you to actually register your copy of the game, which comes with the, the uh, level editor. You snarfed last night. <laughs> last night? Also, hey, uh, Zero and J-Pop, and I might have missed some people as well, I'm not sure. There's a lot of things all happening at the same time. Oh, this ain't great. Oh, we got tagged to hell there. Uh, we gonna die. Also, I like I like that you can kind of anticipate your shot. I was like, if if you want to shoot around a corner, you absolutely can do that. We're out of tags. No! I still need to go back for that key. And now the snarfs are coming from all directions. What shall become of our hero? We could collect all of these uh, treasures here, but we are out of tags. I think the better idea is just to get the hell out of here. Ah! What am I doing? And then I shot the wrong way and died. Oh well. Uh, where is the high score table, by the way? I definitely reached the high score table, but uh, doesn't seem to be showing it anywhere. Uh, anyway. Down oh, I'm friggin' blind. Okay, yes. 10264. That is my score. So that was Snarf. Of course, leave it to Zinf to find the good games in this collection. Let's put it on the board. Das. Uh, aid 3. Snarf 26. That was Snarf. And quite frankly, I am calling that a treasure. Like, it is... It is pretty fun. It's very madcap. It's, uh... Really, like, th this, is, this is something that I'm sure a lot of people... I put in win, DOS. 
This is something that I'm sure a lot of people would have spent a lot of time on, especially considering the fact that the registered version comes with an editor. Like, I'd like to see how many levels have been created for this thing, because I'm sure that the number is higher than zero, if nothing else. What's next? Okay, win games. Uh, MW2, hold push, mark it off. All right, gold pusher. By Eric Friedman, Danielle Vrie, and Willem Vrie. Features 104 rooms with action, strategy, and difficult puzzles. Five monster types, each with different behavior and intelligence. Choose your own order to complete uh, the puzzle in arcade rooms. Save feature remembers which rooms you've completed. Uh, snapshot feature takes you back to the middle of a puzzle? This game has save states? Wow. Top score, fast color animation, lots of sound effects. And cost ten dollars. The first sixteen rooms are educational. Okay, so we have sixteen uh, tutorial rooms, four actual rooms, and then the rest of them are in the register version, which costs ten dollars. Okay. Well, that started off real quick, and I still have no idea how to play. Help. Oh, this game uses... Okay, I can also use the numpad, but it uh, also uses the uh, the Vikies. Hedgical. Okay, so the keys push around. Space to throw a spade. Whoa. Why are you moving to the left, uh, to the right by yourself? Oh, you're following my cursor. Let's turn off mouse control and try that again. There we go. Okay, so move the pot, move the pot of gold onto the rainbow. We're a, we're a leprechaun, I guess. That. You can fill and kill with a rock or crush it. Oh, is this flappy? This is flappy, isn't it? Yeah, this is straight up flappy. Yay! You can lame, block, and fill with this. You can lame. Well, that's kind of lame. Oh. But now you're in the way. Fantastic. And now I'm dead. Oh, good. There we go. All right, so now what do I do about How do we get through this? Uh, 
So this guy is tracking on me here. Oh, and it's doing some pathfinding too. At least to some extent. Because like I started going into there. And then figured, hey, I can't get to Mr. Leprechaun from here. Ah. And that just starts me right back off. I move, okay, I can move to other levels as well. Oh, these float up. Interesting. Okay, and I can also push them down. Well, that's that's dead forever now. I do appreciate the fact that it just kind of it just kind of keeps uh allowing me to continue without necessarily completing previous levels. Yeah, this does play a lot like Flappy for the NES. Rocks can kill nasty monsters too. Nasty monsters. Is... Now, do these track on me? They only seem to track once they've run into a wall. Yes, uh, Zinfandel did uh, dig through the Game Empire disc a few months ago, along with uh, Dr. Doss and uh, Anna Anthropy. And then uh, Doss himself did a different stream on... Um, I forget what the, what the name of his compilation was. Lift the pot with a balloon, but be aware of the monsters. So does that mean I can like... I am going to have to kind of nudge this ever so gently. I'm going to nudge it a little too far. But can I like push this up then? Nope. Now I'm going to die. How do I... Well, not like that. Anyway, this is Gold Pusher. Um, that was ten dollars? Well... Doesn't quite strike my fancy, but it looks pretty neat. Uh, let's see. Mark that off, and uh, let's go to the board. Ah, uh, NW2, Gold Push, Gold Pusher. Um. I, like I said, I, I didn't really get super into this game, but I can, I can see this 
getting pretty involved for someone who would really have a good time with it. And I, I don't want to like necessarily keep my view to to just like my own personal experience. It is going to be a little bit based on my experience, but also like let's look at the value of the game as well. It costs ten dollars on top of that. Ten dollars for an additional eighty-four levels. Uh I think I'll call this a relic. I'm not gonna go as far as to call it a treasure. There is definitely some value there. All right. My name is WC Snake Bar. Mark it off and uh, let's go take a look. How do you see? Snake Bar. No files to look at, really, so let's just open her up. This is a snake clone. How to play. You are the snake. Okay, so it's turning controls, not movement controls. I need to press left and right to turn left and right, or I can use the mouse buttons as well. Uh, up arrow will pause, down arrow will continue. Now what is this add board? What does this mean? What does this mean? Next board? Oh! This is a level editor. I see. I can also modify the current board. Okay. Well, that's cool. Uh, hang on. I don't know. Wait, did I just ruin it? Okay, there we go. We got the original board set back. I make some sleepy time tea. Anyway, let's actually play the game. Actually, remembering to uh, to start the uh, the timer this time, although not right when I started to play. Also, I am noticing the snake in the upper right there are getting shorter. I'm guessing that this is timed, and so if we don't get Oh, there's an exit, too. So I'm guessing if we don't get to a fruit before that timer runs out, we starve. Also, we gained a life for finishing that level. Oh, I, I have definitely played the Nokia Snake game. I didn't have a Nokia phone myself. But my mom did. At least I, I'm pretty sure that my first phone was a Motorola. And not one of the fancy Motorolas. That's gonna be the last apple of this level. 
And now we find the exit. No, we don't really find the exit. It's right obviously there. We just need to go to the exit. And if I press up, it pauses the game. If I press down, it resumes the game. And you know, this, this is pretty good. It's perfectly responsive. It has levels. It has an extra little gimmick that's not overly intrusive. Like getting to the exit. It doesn't seem to increase in speed. I mean, that, that seems to be the only thing that, uh, that is missing from this. Let's get a little faster as you go. I'm gonna finish this level and then we'll see what happens uh, when that timer runs out. Or maybe I can just run into myself. Which restarts the entire level, which to me seems acceptable for an arcade game. And this is this is basically what it is. Yeah, this is a perfectly cromulent game. And also I ran into myself again. Let's see what happens when the timer runs out. See if like it's either going to speed up at that point or it's just we lose that snake. Oh, what is this? No, I just added like a whole bunch of them. Yeah, it's kind of like in Bomberman, where like the like the original Bomberman, where if time runs out, you don't die, but you do end up with like a million of those uh, coin enemies that are out for your blood. Okay, well, what happens if time runs out again? Oh, okay. So every time time runs out, it just adds a bunch more fruit, both to the screen and to your quota. Also, I just boxed both of those in. That's great. T acquired. And I ran, ran into myself. You know what? I think that's good. But uh, yeah, this this is an acceptable game. Five dollars. If you want the source code, is twenty five dollars. We'll send the source code on disc and paper. The, this guy will print out his Turbo Pascal source code and send it to you. You can also reach him on America Online. Yeah, I am. I am content with this. Uh, so that was WC Snake Bar, and uh, not gonna go all the way up and call it a treasure, but I will call this a relic. The it's a perfectly acceptable snake game and has its own twist on it and it only costs five dollars i and it has save games which is great we we dot save we can play our game again later if we want to
Yeah, it has a level editor too. Like th- this has all of the things. It's not like it's not standout, but it's good. I have no complaints. Oh, I know what that is. That hasn't been on. Strategy. Okay, it's it's a white space. Sure. I am surprised this has not been on Shovelware Diggers. Or maybe it has, but under a different... Uh... What am I looking for here? Kai. This Kai version 2.0. Save the children. Save the furniture! Um, this new level 2.0 now supports the charity Save the Children. Okay. So dig deep. Please give. See online help for more details. On screen editor, five new levels with a bunch of new stuff. Better mouse control. Loads of new level files and credit card registration. Good luck, have fun, and do some good. That's for the Save the Children Fund. I know I don't know what we're saving them from, but um, we can save the children. <laughs> you know, if you're if you're going to make like if you if you're going to like have donations to a to an organization in your game, you should probably explain what that organization does. Just saying. Uh, so yeah. We sent all money to save the children. We have, wow. Okay, so this is entirely donationware. Uh, the author is used seven fifty for each registration. Oh, okay, not not entirely. Uh, <laughs> it saves the children. Done. So seven pound fifty for each registration. Twenty pounds and over to cover the cost of sending a disc and developing the next game. So if you don't, if you send twenty uh, twenty five pounds, uh, say a children gets seven fifty, uh, seventeen fifty. If you send less than twenty pounds, save the children gets the lot. Okay. Send more than ten pounds, you get a letter. Okay, so there there is a nag screen, and they'll let you disable it. It's probably a code or something. Twenty pounds, you receive a disc containing the latest version. Thirty-two levels. And so yes, the Kai is the green circle thing named after our dog. I can push things, sometimes pull them. And we just use the cursor keys. I will only move diagonally. If we can move diagonally, good to know. And we'll try to catch up with the go. Okay, so you can hold the button. Click the, the left button, okay, or hold it down, whatever. We're going to be using the cursor controls. Okay. Yes, this is Kai. Uh, this is just a practice level that lets you kind of play around with the different uh, functions so we can pull these things around. They're kind of magnets, I guess. I don't know what this here does. What if you run into this? What happens then? Not sure if that really did much. Okay. So that does rotate the direction that these things take. Now you got your enemies in the corners here, the things that will kill you. Kai gives you light, oopless ZZT vibes. Yeah, 
I, I can see that. First level was for practice. That was a practice. The system works. All right. The real Kai begins here. And simply we just get all of the crystals. And I think I just boxed myself in. And we can go diagonally, uh, supposedly. Oh, but we can only go diagonally if both, like, in this case, I can only go diagonally down and right if I can move both down and right. Uh, so yeah, we need to restart this all. There, there doesn't appear to, well, I, I, I was about to say it doesn't appear to be lives, but also like there is the three green circles in the bottom, le uh, bottom left corner, so I don't know. Okay, so I'm guessing that we can use this. Okay, we can use this. This is really a magnet in like every sense of the word here. Although I'm not really sure that if I push this over here, it's just going to clump down there again. Hmm. Okay. We're going to deal with this, uh, this log jam first and foremost. There we go. Now, are we going to need this thing again? I don't think we will. And I hope that we don't. And I managed to box myself in again. Okay, I'm giving this one more try. Uh, just note that this is me being bad at the game. This is not, dang it, this is not the game itself being bad. Never beat this level as a kid. Well, hold on to your socks, because we're going to beat it right here, right now. Yeah, I have, I definitely remember at, at some point playing Kai. I'm not sure if I, if I beat this level either. <laughs> There we go. And then move this. And there we go. Okay, that's got the easy one. That was the easy one, everyone. That was the easy one. Well, that was incorrect. All right, let's start with getting this crystal here. I'm gonna make some room. There we go. So now with that part out of the way, 
this looks definitely one way. So good thing that we took care of that side first. Okay, yeah, we can we can push single pushers back. And I probably want to clear these clear away blocks. And that was probably the incorrect way to do that. You see a naughty? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I see what it is that I needed to do now. Yeah, that, that is kind of the, the drawback of this game. If you make one mistake, you have to do the entire left, uh, the, the entire level all over again. So I think I'm going to call it good for Kai here, but still, it ain't too bad. Um, filled. And that was a strategy. Can I? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with like with an older standard of games because there there was a lot of games back back at this time that uh, really were just there to kind of eat up your time. I do also appreciate the uh, the charitable uh, donation thing going on. Um, what? I'm not gonna call it a treasure. Not sure if I want to call it a relic or a curio, because there's not much here. But what is here is definitely functional, and it does have a level in it. How much did this cost? Right, it was at least ten dollars, uh, ten pounds rather. So that's twenty dollars. It's a bit pricey. For nineteen ninety two. I'm going to call this a relic. The, there's, there's a decent amount of gameplay in here, and most of it is going to just kind of eat up your time, but it wasn't unheard of for, for games in this era. Alrighty, um, so that will take us to the break. So y'all can take a moment, get some to drink, go to the bathroom if you need to, stretch your arms, stretch your legs, stretch your teeth, and keep putting in those requests. In about 10 to 15 minutes, we'll get back to the list. And um, don't worry too much if I don't get to your game in the queue um, by the end of the stream. Uh, pretty much everything that is still on the list at the end of the stream, I'll just end up um, refunding anyway. So... Um, you put in as many requests as you want. Uh, I think there's a cap of like 40. I figured that 40 was about enough to uh, fill up the entire stream. Um, if I see that we still have some time left, then I'll figure it out from there. Anyway, break time. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> 